I've been really on my own when I think about it Yeah, my house is not a home when I think about it I've been feeling so alone when I think about it Yeah, nobody really got me when I think about it I'm really on my own when I think about it What is good, YouTube fam? It's your boy Simicon back here again with another reaction video for you guys today for today's reaction video, we got top 10 darkest South Park moments. Now, before we jump up in it, man, if you want uncensored reactions, uncensored reactions to full episodes of South Park, American Dad, Family Guy, and Big Mouth, and so much more, go ahead and become a member over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Simba TV. Let's jump up in it. This show is such a dichotomy. On the one hand, there's the fart jokes. On the other hand is the sobering social commentary. This list ain't about fart jokes. Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest South Park moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. That means we're looking at the darkest, grimmest, or most disturbing moments from the South Park TV show, not the movie or games. Also, a spoiler alert is probably in order here. Let's get to it. Number 10, Stan sees the world as feces. Leave it to Trey Parker and Matt what? Stone to create a depressingly realistic portrayal of divorce and then fill the screen with literal crap. Your getting old is all about the inevitability of change primarily expressed through Stan's parents admitting that they're unhappy and filing for divorce. Soundtracked by Fleetwood Mac's Landslide, the final montage sees Stan solemnly going through the motions while trying to come to terms with Sharon and Randy's separation. Also, the boy turns to alcohol to deal with the situation. In its own slightly juvenile way, South Park cuts through the nonsense and captures the raw emotion of such a situation. Number 9. Man Bear Pig Goes on a Spree Man Bear Pig is real and, uh, he's killing lots of people in our town. On the surface, a grotesque monster fond of brutally murdering people is already rather gruesome. However, the real-life context behind Man Bear Pig's rampage is the real kicker. An obvious stand-in for global warming, Man Bear Pig is originally introduced as a figment of Al Gore's imagination. Jump forward more than a decade and climate change can no longer be dismissed as the ravings of a madman. Facts. Basically, serving as an apology, South Park sets the real Man Bear Pig loose on the unprepared public, who prefer to play Red Dead Redemption 2 while passing the monster-shaped buck on to the next generation. We're gonna face Man Bear Pig and put an end to this deal once and for all. Number 8. Kenny, Kevin, and Karen's parents go to jail. South Park rarely hesitates to tackle sensitive topics in the name of comedy. The Poor Kid episode launches with Kenny's parents being hauled off to jail for selling meth and the kids being shipped off to an awful foster home. To make matters worse, but also funnier, the whole ordeal is filmed for a reality show called White Trash in Trouble, so oh. Kenny's misfortune becomes a source of entertainment. Besides making a few timely and risky references to the Penn State scandal, the poor kid also has Cartman going to the absolute limits to try and avoid the stigma of being labeled as poor. Well, guess I'm off to a foster home then. Hawaii is my first choice. Number 7. A Gathering of Woodland Critters Now our Critter Christmas can finally happen! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Bro, what? <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> Uh, I love South Park, bro. I hope they never change. <laughs> bro, that was crazy. Lynn Critters. Now our Critter Christmas can finally happen. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Christmas is the season of rejoicing, oh, reflection, man. stockings, and in the case of South Park, satanic rituals intended to summon the Antichrist and any food eaten over the last 24 hours. Stan is bamboozled into assisting a group of woodland creatures who are preparing for the coming of the Animal Kingdom's supposed savior, a process involving sacrificing and eating a rabbit. While nothing screams happy holidays like cute animals gorging on even cuter animals, South Park goes the extra mile by throwing in a blood orgy. We imagine the woodland orgy falls on the 13th day of Christmas. Yay, sacrifice me to the devil! Yay, yay, yay! yay. <laughs> Number 6. The Priest Cleanup Crew Send in a cleanup crew. Now. South Park is not afraid to put religious institutions to the sword, and few jabs are as direct as the Catholic cleanup crew. After 
After Butters and Father Maxey disappear, a group of priests is sent to expunge all evidence of any wrongdoing by the church's representative. In order to catch the seemingly criminal rogue Father Maxey, the cleanup crew set a trap by kidnapping a few children to use as bait. South Park effectively satirizes such a dark and hushed subject by presenting the priests as gangsters and utterly eliminating any subtlety. Father. You wanted to find me? Well, here I am. Number five, Butters Home Life. Butters, we are talking to you. Explain yourself, mister. With people like Randy Marsh, Mr. Garrison, and Eric Cartman, the innocent Butters presents a welcome break from all the rampant cynicism. Or that used to be the case before season five's finale decided to focus exclusively on Butters' tragic home life. Along with refusing to believe Butters could ever be bullied, Stephen and Linda Stotch welcome any reason to punish or straight up abuse the naive boy. The torment extends beyond Butters' parents, as the kid's grandmother is also the worst. Damn. Choosing just one dark moment is near impossible, but that time Linda tries to drown Butters has to rank quite high. Yeah, there's no room for innocence in South Park. It's okay, baby. Mommy will be with you very soon. What you mean? I think that, yep, it looks like the car's filling up with water. Number four, the continuous school incidents. Eric, that's Shooter enough. Is down. Shooter is down. Now let's move on to the next equation. Who could have predicted an episode called Dead Kids would contain a dark moment or two? When South Park Elementary becomes the scene of multiple school shootings, the town's adults, teachers, and students treat the problem as a minor inconvenience rather than anything meriting a proper discussion. As the only one truly troubled by these shootings, Stan's mother Sharon is ostracized, mocked, and eventually broken by the town. Any premise involving school shootings is destined to be dark, but Dead Kids is totally devoid of any optimism yeah. that a solution may be found in the future. Are they are wild? you serious? Number three, Britney Spears attempts. It's Britney Watch. Considering South Park frequently injects religious figures into episodes, it's safe to assume celebrities are unlikely to be handled with kid gloves. The cartoon outing Bono as a sentient piece of feces is all in good fun, but a depressed and unhinged Britney Spears placing a gun in her mouth and pulling the trigger is considerably darker. Despite being short half a skull, Britney continues to fulfill her duty as the pop princess. Released just two months following Britney's heavily publicized breakdown, South Park's episode presents the press as vultures feasting off the celebrity's fragile mental state. Number two, chef's brainwashing and death. Children. You see, man, South Park can be dark, but they do be hidden at some real points. You know, like, they have real points. That is true. Like, the media honestly made her, you know, like, go crazy, bro. Like, when someone is following you around 24-7 and trying to get into your life, you're going to go mad. You're going to go crazy. And that's, that's why I like South Park and Family Guy and stuff like that, because they bring some type of realness to the shows, man. Not all the time we're going to agree with it, you know, but they do incorporate some real facts. Number two, chefs brainwashing and death. <laughs> Driven by anger and grief, the return of Chef was South Park's response to Isaac Hayes, the voice behind Chef, leaving the show after the cartoon openly mocked Scientology. Chef joins the Super Adventure Club, an organization of traveling pedophiles who utilize brainwashing techniques to convince new members to fall in line. The boys try in vain to save Chef, but the club's conditioning is too deeply ingrained to break. With all hope lost, South Park violently kills Chef. I didn't know South Park was that petty, man. Now that's some petty stuff. <laughs> South Park is petty! <laughs> in a scene that feels defeatist rather than cathartic. Without context, this moment features a beloved character being brutally and vividly killed. With context, the return of Chef is heartbreaking. <laughs> Number one, Scott Tennerman's special chili. Do you like it? Do you like it, Scott? I call it Mr. and Mrs. Tennerman chili. Frankly, Cartman could easily have dominated this entire list. That being said, Eric's crowning act of evilness puts to shame all of the character's other vile acts. After being played and humiliated by Scott Tennerman, Cartman decides revenge is a dish best served with a side of cannibalism. During a cook-off between the two bullies, what? Cartman serves Scott a bowl of chili made out of the unsuspecting boy's own parents. 
This is not some mean-spirited joke. Cartman genuinely resorts to murder and cannibalism as revenge for being conned out of less than $20. What? Eric is an unapologetic psychotic monster who somehow is rarely not hilarious. I made you eat your parents. I feel like the only thing that would make the Scott Tennerman thing worse is if it were based on Nah, South, South Park is crazy. <laughs> they are wild! I did not know that. That's crazy. I gotta watch these episodes, man. I gotta... I'm gonna I'm a binge watch them on Patreon. Y'all go become a member because y'all gonna wanna watch that. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. Thank you guys for commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace!